welcome tech enthusiast and cyber adventurers to the fifi show hello everyone welcome back to another exciting episode of this fifi show today we will be talking a lot about how virtual cso's are so pivotal in the industry and they make sure that security is at the forefront of the organization you know whenever i say an idea strikes to you it's not something you know which is uh, very unique someone might have already thought about it and it's correct, like you know correct. you are not like reinventing the wheel or something you just have to make sure like how you can uh, contribute yeah. that or maybe you know make some changes around it because uh, it was like when we were hiring we were not finding like candidates who are like like we wanted because uh, usually whoever i was interviewing the person is like you know i know kali linux then no basics of uh, networking operating systems Uh, so these are some things oh, which that's a common problem which you have seen that okay uh, yeah so, so go and learn a few tool and then just absolutely i i really i do not want to rely heavily on tools because you know you should be knowing how to do things manually if i correct, if i correct. if i if i'm if i'm testing a network i don't want you to just run and map on it i want you to see deep dive into that network what are the ports how it is configured how can i get into it i don't want you to run and then give me like 10000 ports which are open what will i do with that so <laughs> i don't want that so i want people who have like that strong hard core skill and then tools can be learned it is like uh, one or That's two standard thing. problem of the industry we have seen yeah and uh, it was like uh, i was like this is a problem that we need to solve and we need to do something about it and then we and started no, no. and you know you are not the first one who thought that and solved that and <laughs> trying to solve that i know a lot of people have attempted this and <laughs> e- e- even in future five year down the line somebody will come with exactly same thought that there is no yes. knowledge and i will have to start something they will also start they will also try as a company i know but uh, i know it is like students are getting placed so we focus on completely hands on and building up hard skills like networking voice basic scripting that knowledge also you should have so we have designed right. the curriculum in a way where you know you're you're being job ready if you want to go and you know someone asks you something you should be able to do it like you know not just say like you know i just know kali and i am a hacker so <laughs> that is something i i just said this has been done a lot many times and this will be done i know <laughs> it will it will you know we we all are in so the in same race in 2016 in 2016 when uh, my company got acquired by quickheal mm-hmm. it was the birth of quickheal academy mm-hmm. the my education wing was acquired by quickheal it now it was then called as quickheal academy uh-huh. where we created and uh, managed a lot of courses and not only individual courses we also partnered with a lot of universities so i drafted a mtech degree program and uh, which is still active in pune university mm-hmm. that's amazing and th- that was 2016 i came out in 2019 and again in 2023 i'm hearing the same <laughs> problem and people are still <laughs> running that same business right? so this this is an everlasting one yeah because if you see cyber security it's like all of us are doing cyber security in some way or the other we might be doing Correct. similar things we might all have like you know scanners uh, going coming out we mo- might have like tools you know who are scanning your endpoints your apis they are already available they are already available in the market but still there are new new uh, tools which are coming up doing the same thing it's like uh, maybe one size doesn't fit all it all depends upon you know one who can afford all, what yeah. and uh, plus uh, see this is more about reach everybody has a different way of understanding learning mm. the camp- the training content has to reach different people in a different manner and with mm. ages the new uh, uh, teaching the new courses would still come in the mm. new companies would come in and who would create more courses around it and people will run into those courses <laughs> So on the job learning is also a very uh, open thing and people do yeah. that people yeah. get into cyber security from various industries it's not like mm-hmm. they have learned cyber security and then went into the industry yeah. they can be coming in from that but yes uh, on the job training is also a very good opportunity where a lot of mm-hmm. people have done in past and again will do it in future as well that people can be trained on the job for a lot of cyber uh, security stuff 
right so there's a student in our uh, institute he is into human resources uh in in a company and he came like i want to get into cyber security so he did a, a course and internship with us and he got like a security analyst position in his own company where he was an hr say so, yeah, people people who wants to do it they are doing it from different sectors also so correct uh, very right you right. have been like virtual ceos like you know for so many uh, companies and all so how how do you think like you know uh, like startups and everything can they uh, have this flexibility of having a ceo on board and you know what what can be the uh, uh, you know complex situations or something that can be that can ceo help solve See, everybody need to run a security program that is known mm-hmm. and when it comes to a startup either they are building something or not only startup a smaller size company a lot of companies are in a sweet spot of say 30 people 50 people where they can't afford a full time person to run the security show but they still need someone to run the security show for them that's where the virtual ceo thing comes in we help them <laughs> out setting up the whole security program running it for them and mm-hmm. i don't know if it is it was known as virtual ceo back then or not uh, when we started in 2018 mm-hmm. uh, even we never called it as virtual ceo at that point yeah. of time and uh, this requirement was not only for startups and stuff so like uh, in our case uh, we have our sweet spot of uh, under 1500 people company mm-hmm. but uh, frankly when i started this thing my first client was a 18000 people company wow. spread across three countries and uh, 17 different offices mm-hmm. so that's where uh, they had a full time ceo as well and running the show right. but they still wanted to augment the ceo for certain help and certain mm-hmm. services and that's where the, we started with them we ran the complete security program top down because the situation was uh, they suddenly got a new customer who was in defense sector so their threat perception changed they were now more perceived as the supply chain target that why okay. then the attack can go on to the defense sector so they came in that okay our threat landscape has changed suddenly because we have got this contract how do and what do we do mm-hmm. and that's all uh, where it started we did the complete security transformation for them and then we were still running the security consulting show and then later on mm-hmm. uh, rather we started calling it virtual ceo back then right and then i realized that okay slowly the word is catching up and a lot of people it are is. using the virtual ceo or a fractional ceo word a lot even uh, i i started hearing virtual ceo like couple of years back you know i think um, if i am honest i started hearing around 2021 so it's like you know just couple of year back because otherwise even the cyber security world was also not like you know very well distinguished it was used to be like an it team and everyone does everything in that it just became as a separate function because of the popularity you know this thing is getting not popularity the need was there the yes. need started the uh, people started the company started feeling that okay the hmm. segregation of duty is important and we need a separate security team to manage mm-hmm. everything that mm-hmm. came in from various sources one is uh, the regulatory requirements started saying that that you need a security mm-hmm. professional security team even clients started asking right that okay if you have an it team what about a security team do you have a security team as well yes. so so practically we have seen people do security for two three reasons one either the regulator is asking b the client is asking see some companies say that oh no we want to be secure and then we want yeah. to get onto the security journey although that number is pretty less <laughs> compared to the regulatory yes. pushed clients Absolutely. or clients pushed clients so they also felt the need that yes there is a need of a team now right. the problem is not every company can afford a full time ceo <laughs> plus also at the same time not every company can give a good career graph to a ceo right so this guy who would join them would be a junior person spend mm-hmm. some year be called as ceo because they have to have a ceo 
and then this guy goes back into the industry and industry says boss you're not a seen so yet you're way too low in experience and stuff right so then it started becoming a difficult activity for a lot of people and because mm-hmm. lack of career graph not many people stayed around in these kind of companies <laughs> so so i'll tell you i have a company uh, client which has around 350 odd people they have a one standard flat infrastructure created where nothing else is changing now and it will remain as is not much happening the ciso there who was hired felt that boss now everything is established i don't want to keep running the log monitoring show and say that i'm <laughs> progressing in my career what do i do with my career yeah so they, that person moved out and then other people are not willing to join because your company is well established every security pro- policy process yeah. tools all of them are in a well shape and you don't want to go beyond this onto the security so what yeah. will i do as a ciso absolutely so there are these kind of companies as well and then they felt that okay the virtual ciso is more easier for them to run mm-hmm. it manage it and for us yes we have mm-hmm. those kind of customers also mm-hmm. and that's where we help them out in this way no yeah, absolutely it's it's a very versatile role if i say because uh as covid also started and everyone working from home i think the need for uh, virtual ciso's literally increased and virtual ciso as a service also started coming up it's not like that it wasn't there before every company needed it but i think it was a paradigm shift back then like you know everyone became much more everything aware about everything converted into virtual yeah everything, everything got converted to... into virtual so ciso also got converted into <laughs> yeah, virtual absolutely and you know then virtual ciso as a service started coming up and i think that gives uh a virtual ciso lot of uh, visibility into his own area as well because he's working with so many people and with so much of experience he can also innovate things based on the research and analysis that they're doing on other companies and the point that you mentioned like regulatory push i think that's that's a very good point mostly people won't think unless and until it has been mandated on them or you know uh, it has been like pushed through a, a regulation or something so uh, now it's like now so many people working remote and you know uh, so many devices uh, getting connected to each other and data becoming so sensitive so how can you know a ciso you have so much ex- experience in this how do you ensure that you know the data is secure and even outside the environment people are not able to you know get to it the point is uh, look at it as a any security program mm-hmm. gone are the days when your firewall was sufficient to manage your infrastructure your firewall is good enough your people are inside the company and you have one boundary control the perimeter has got dissolved now there is no perimeter the perimeter is now walking along with the user with his phone with his laptops and work from home maybe from spouse's computer or at times when your computer is bad you are actually working in from your uh, kids school computer the yeah. perimeter is now with people yes so the security controls also have to move accordingly and that's what happened and uh, with our clients pre covid when we went ahead with this thought process in the first go and we implemented it they came back to us uh, uh, in the moment lockdown hit they said oh we have to start working from the home and the lockdown mm-hmm. is coming what else do i need to do i said you don't have to do anything you're already ready mm-hmm. for it your setup yeah. is already ready that your people can start working from outside mm-hmm. so that was uh, by chance that was a very good thing in hindsight that okay we had already created it accordingly for them that they can start working remotely immediately mm-hmm. but a lot of company had to run around during that lockdown period that how do they securely start working from the remote locations sure. but again the moment that people went out of the company when out of the office premises the perimeter went along with them mm-hmm. and that's where the security control has to be you cannot now go to the days when you can have a one firewall configured and everybody <laughs> sitting in the company and managing everything and everything is called secure no it yeah. cannot happen anymore yeah because uh, uh, i know like there are certain applications and all that you can only open inside the uh, company perimeter 
and you know if they are connected to company wifi or you know whenever you enter and when you go out you cannot access your company data because you are outside you're not connected to their network so i think that posed a lot of uh, threat to companies they were also like not sure like you know how to navigate that landscape and so flip flip it just a little bit more yeah. with the new age yeah you don't have to be in the office building mm-hmm. but you have to use a company provided device and then absolutely. only you will be able to access it absolutely the the logic is still the same the solution is mm-hmm. different now you can have it that way that you can still mm-hmm. access the data so called inside that yeah. area but again now you are traveling or you are working from home and mm-hmm. you still have access the point is earlier we were saying inside the company building or mm, behind yes. the company ip now you are saying on the company devices and the devices could be anywhere absolutely and you sound it like so simple like you know people over complicate things and you know over think if i give my example you don't have to exactly so like i started in covid and you know we are we are 100% remote my whole consulting team is remote and you know i didn't find it as a challenge because you know you are using up the devices you are connected to a company or vpn and you know there are certain things that you can take in place and it's very cost effective and you know it's so easy but still people get paranoid thinking oh how will i do that my data will be like lost someone can access something somewhere but in this world if i don't right so, controls if yeah. you have the right controls depending on your threat perception depending so, on your threat vector See, you can't boil the ocean and have every solution in, on the earth. So depending on your requirement, your threat perception, the kind of vector you are in, yeah. you can actually plan. And so that's what we help uh, people. We help them plan how much security is optimum security. Yeah. So we work absolutely vendor agnostic. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, when we propose a solution to someone of some of our clients. Mm. we give them three or four vendor options that okay these these three four vendor options are there you can choose any of them but this is a solution which is required right and once you work with that mode it it it's easy it's not that complicated absolutely and uh, i also think like you know ciso's uh, often become like you know center point or you know uh, if something goes wrong and you know it all falls on like you did not do the proper thing and you know he or he or she whoever works in this role becomes liable for what happens and when we say like security is a myth no, no application or nothing can be 100% secure because it's a continuous cycle you have to continually do it it's not something a uh, you know one time fix or you can just put a bandaid on a leaking pipe and it's done forever exactly it has it, it has to be a continuous uh, you know cycle and when you know companies blame ciso's for what happened to them so uh, how how it affects the ciso's work see i would rather not comment on the <laughs> solar wind ciso activity which has has happened and there's a lot of known and unknown facts about that but mm-hmm. in any case it's the ciso or virtual ciso's responsibility mm-hmm. to let the management understand the risk right and not in a a uh, heavily technically loaded thing that so many vulnerabilities so many attack possibilities yeah. you have to make it easier for them to understand the board the management they are also doing something they are running a business yeah. security is not their business security is just a function to support them so if you can't convince them or you can't tell them the situation into their language the gap between the management and security team start building up and then you would be in a position of blame right but if you have convinced the uh, end management if you convince the board that the risk are real and you have to convey it in a way that they understand once they have understood they are your partner into the whole thing they would be helping you out and then they know the risk suppose they do not go ahead and do the security as well at least it's a known risk it's not unknown or it's not your fault that you have not told them Mm-hmm. articulated the with them on that this risk do exist and you have to fix right. at least it's a known devil for the management not an unknown devil where they mm-hmm. find the ciso as a devil right right and sometimes you know with uh, changing landscapes uh, into the security fields now attacks are also evolving if you see uh, we were uh, still 
digesting web3 in indian market and suddenly ai and machine learning boom also came up and uh, with these kind of uh, you know evolvement of threats and everything how do like companies keep up with uh, you know these uh, oncoming uh, attacks these trends because they will have to keep up with these in order to protect themselves so how how do we take care of that if, if you go ahead and take everything as a risk or everything as a problem yeah. it will always be there because the technology the world the globe everybody is progressing everybody will progress towards something new shiny yeah what anybody and we advise to all our customers as well when you are fixing your problem fix it from yeah. the core from the first principle perspective mm-hmm. if it is strong in the base you would be able to withstand a newer mm-hmm. attack vector you would be able to steer yourself easily to protect yourself from the new attacks coming mm-hmm. in if you are living on a vendor post market one vendor comes in and says sir if you don't take this tool you will be hacked yeah <laughs> and then the company buys it so we have seen so many of them yes then you are actually stacking one solution on top of another you are not looking at your risk absolutely but if you have solved it bottom up from your mm-hmm. risk understood your risk solved it from that step ahead many of this new age problem would be either not affecting you or a very minor change or minor addition yeah. into your existing solutions uh, methodology will take care of these problems mm-hmm. the point is uh the phishing has gone in the ai mode the language is getting right absolutely if you have set up the processes right with your people mm-hmm. and you have already used a decent anti phishing solution yeah it's the role of the anti phishing company to tune their product to catch even these and it's not only the language by which a phishing is decided right yeah but if yeah. you have solved that problem at a basic level in the very beginning then ai based phishing is coming up that's okay yes. ai based uh, deep fake based uh, video call on which people yeah. transferred money right yeah why if the company process are so well defined that the yes. financial transaction will go through these these methodology or these steps you would be able to identify it just mm-hmm. a deep fake video or deep fake video call right. will not cause that kind of a damage to you right so people try to solve everything with technology and that's the biggest problem absolutely i have seen like you know technology is uh, not the answer to every mm-hmm. problem you yeah. have to go ground up you have to go on the first principle basis and then technology is there to assist you you would require technology to assist you but yep. that's not the only solution you have stacking up of tools i have seen that literally you know you are implementing a tool on your infrastructure to capture uh, anomalies or undetected activities then you are using and that that tool gives you a capability of uh, you know monitoring your firewall as well and then on op- on top of it you implement another tool to take care of your firewall and then you want to integrate both tools so it's like so much of tools talking together and that, that doesn't make sense like so in consulting it's called as this it's yeah. called as the cyber security zenga <laughs> absolutely so you create a zenga tower out of cyber security tools someday somewhere yeah. things will start falling out and and we try to consult them into saying like when you already have this thing implemented it is monitoring everything from your firewall to your sock and why do you want to get into another tool that will separately uh, you know monitor your firewall and you want that to be integrated with this tool so that you can have a comprehensive dashboard like you can't have it all so <laughs> so that thing i think people do not understand and i really like your point like people try to solve everything with technology they think that that is the answer now a data breach happens I, i want to understand it is so difficult how do you regain trust of the people when such kind of activities happen because it's like company's reputation online right the companies are suffering uh, from a breach it is out in public and now those who have went there and have their data over there they will also feel like i am also attacked in some way or the other then now when cisos come into picture 
how do you think they will be contributing to get the image back into the public and they they gain that trust of people no we are there it, it, it's a very difficult question it's a very difficult action for them to do that okay just a ciso coming in and making yeah. uh, this kind of a bold image that now things are in good shape and uh, we are serious about your stuff the yeah. once it has gone it is a pr damage already mm. and then it is the whole company's responsibility to rebuild the trust in the customer base it's not only ciso's uh, activity and frankly ciso's role is a very smaller one in that mm-hmm. ciso can come out and just say that okay we have started doing this thing there were mistakes we have moved on from there and we have started taking care of a lot of activity and then how as per the industry standards we are trying to fix things and make sure that we are not vulnerable right but that's not only activity the it has to go bottom uh, top down but top to bottom that how the whole company started rebuilding the trust into the customer base mm. that okay we are still as good as in the services mm-hmm. we are still the best services available and we have taken additional care of mishap which has happened no don't i i always suggest people don't try to hide that or oh, nothing has yeah. happened and uh, that's fake or that's not right or don't don't try to push it under the carpet it people gain happened. more trust when you come out and say that okay come it has out. happened yes. to us it has Absolutely. happened to us we have learned lesson and we are fixing it and we are trying to compensate with as possibility absolutely and then we are not over here like if you remember aims also got like had all india institute of medical sciences they also came out they also came out with that that they have recovered some servers and you know they are working on fixing it now the security would be on top of their mind even if it was not earlier but when it happens people become extra aware they become cautious you know how how they can uh, uh, safeguard what is important that is their data so i think that that sense of uh, awareness is really required in everybody and uh, how we can make sure that we are resilient maybe due to correct to that do. that's the situation uh, and again all of these companies will have to come back and start offering their services yeah. again you yeah. have to just say that okay what has happened has happened that's mm-hmm. the reality and be truthful you are you have seen a right. lot of disclosures who have told yes. us that okay this has happened with us there we went wrong we fixed found it we fixed it we are trying to reanalyze everything from a fresh approach and that's where we are the mm-hmm. people know that these kind of breaches are happening and will happen if you can yeah. bring that confidence in people that we are you are serious about it and mm-hmm. you are really working and you can showcase that you can demonstrate that that will be helpful enough yes totally agree and i have seen like few companies also adopting like uh, you know continuous uh, testing activities or maybe monitoring their um, uh, infrastructure at a certain level where they can do like self security activities themselves and when not manageable involve an external party but then Uh, with the changing times we see like you know companies have to adopt to new technologies also because uh, we cannot be uh, thinking behind world is already 20 steps ahead of us so with that adoption of new technologies there will be security challenges also so when a security team or a virtual ciso or a ciso in place how do they make sure that if a new innovation is being uh, implemented or a new strategy new tool or they want to implement something new into the organization how do they make sure that the security is not compromised because along with new technologies comes new set of problems yes and uh, we, we we discussed this in the few uh, questions back as well yeah that if you are setting up the base properly yes every new technology and you have that level of trust built up inside the company in your name Mm-hmm. every new innovation which is getting brought into the company the management mm-hmm. will still directly ask with you that okay this is what we are doing this is where we are heading what are the new challenges you feel and then keep solving that but remember one mm-hmm. thing you are a support function you have to support the business the business will drive that okay what new adoptions technology adoptions can we do or not 
security cannot come in the way of say no this is bad and you cannot do it mm-hmm. but you have to find a way that okay this may be bad but if it is really required by the business here are the steps you have to take to find the right path and move ahead in a safe manner mm. that would be the role of a ceo that would be the role of the security leader in the company mm. to help the company identify the right way of adopting the newer technology right. and making sure that you are going on the right direction and whether it is a business requirement or not is a business requirement now so that's not that's not security's role to define whether it is yeah. a business requirement or not <laughs> the business has found their way and they yeah. will do they will look at the all new shiny stuff yes and uh, to cite like you know with the chat gpt coming in and every company wanting to launch their own ai like you know their own chat gpt so that was something everybody is doing something in that ai space people run to what I'll is you, new i'll give you an example on that itself on chat gpt yeah. itself when chat gpt came in a lot of ceos and a lot of people started running that oh we have to block chat gpt the user is uploading the code on it the user is uh, talking to chat gpt to get solution people will still do that yeah have your training and awareness module done properly with your employees that they themselves are aware that oh if i am going to use mm-hmm. chat gpt for my this particular activity mm-hmm. i'm actually exposing my company data out are they aware of it they will be getting aware of it if their training if their hand holding has been done properly yeah. i know a lot of companies where employees said oh chat gpt has come which is very nice but now the problem is if i ask it anything it will start getting to know about my company information my priority proprietary information which is their internal yeah and that's where they have sat down with management that okay what is the best way that we can leverage the product we can take yeah. the benefit of it but at the same time not exposing ourselves yes chat gpt is one people are uploading code on chat gpt is something which you're hearing now but people have been uploading code on uh, yeah. server fault and stack exchange and everywhere and asking for help yeah people have exposed their api keys on stack exchange and they asking for help yeah so it from human taking a support of a, another human being on a website portal versus human taking a support of a ai tool at least the core principle is they are still going out <laughs> and seeking help so if you have fixed that come ai come any other kind of intelligence the human intelligence is strong enough at that point of time that they know that oh i cannot do this because i know we have learned about yeah. this this is wrong for my company let me talk to my company that what is the best way by which we can achieve the best of it so and people have done that and it's like you know it all comes down to people they are the first line of defense and they have to be trained properly so i think uh, Most if people the, are trained yeah if people are trained they are the biggest asset of the team true true and uh, i think this only qualifies as a, a success uh, story in itself where people are aware like what i should do and what i shouldn't do and i, I think that's rare that's a rare uh, quality that is there because chat gpt i've seen developers using chat gpt to make uh, websites or you know build something they are using that's it. good that's good that's very good mm-hmm. the point is how much of your internal stuff are you exposing out mm-hmm. see someone who doesn't want to do anything will get the complete thing developed with chat gpt and if somebody is able to get a complete code developed from chat gpt he should rather be moving from the development to the uh prompt engineering team prompt because engine. he has reached that <laughs> level that he can ask ai all of that question but again people have the problem yeah. was people started uploading part of code asking yes. for errors in that asking for Enhanced. security vulnerability in yes. that yes that has happened in past as well people have True. uploaded their codes on forums and asked other people to help them out i know people i am talking about very early on uh, 2003 2004 times people would copy paste the code into the email send it to their friend and ask them to have a look at it yeah it was a friend then it was a community then it is an artificial uh, intelligence, intelligence then it could be a, a any level of intelligence yeah. if that mindset is there that okay am i doing good by sending the code out True. if that is fixed 
but all of this is easy with with all these things uh, i i believe now it everybody knows everything like it is just out there you're like super connected to everything if you have seen the uh, new vision pro goggles being released by apple people have started using it in a way where uh, i i i'm thinking like there's no interaction with now human world everything is like in front of their eyes security matters over there also you're talking with yes, other people using their it's like uh, like metaverse if you see we say like there are so much of problems in that like identity theft or people like you know try to impersonate you and try to take you away your data these kind of things are existing the only thing is like how well prepared we are i don't think so we can be 100% prepared but like if a small percentage that we know to do best things that could be like a great asset for everybody it was a username password theft at one point of time mm-hmm. then the combination of the user credential in the world of single sign on became a single point where people can steal it it is still a mm-hmm. theft of username and password and maybe now mm-hmm. because the multi factor authentication added theft of the multi factor authentication you go ahead to web 3 the whole mm. identity is the wallet mm. theft of that identity is happening mm. then you come on to the metaverse and you spoke about identity theft in metaverse technically all of that is still the same yeah it was in the form of username and password at one point of time but ultimately it's the faceless authentication into a system pretending to be you mm. the identity is the identity was identity the identity is identity the shape and size has changed it has gone ahead from a username password combination to a complete uh, pki based authentication the uh, credentials to a uh, virtual avatar of yours and your 3d yeah. ultimately it's all the same right yeah yeah security is like everywhere and it's 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 like just the people who want to who are part of it are the ones who can safeguard themselves on it right so uh, i think uh, these uh, things are ever ending and i don't think so we can have a one stop shop one stop shop solution for it it has to be uh, done viewed modified changed like thousand times like it has to be fine tuned it yes. has to be fine tuned and like any uh, last closing comments on how do you see the future and you know the outlook of security coming and shaping up and your your part of vc so supporting that one thing which will keep changing if if you keep things in a very simple manner mm-hmm. one security challenge which will keep coming is increase of the attack surface your exposure will keep increasing with different technologies different avenues different way of accessing things your attack surface will keep changing remember in the beginning we spoke about the firewall is not sufficient yeah. because the attack surface has moved beyond the firewall with web3 and metaverse and iot the yeah. attack surface has moved even further true with when saas came in everybody's data started going on to cloud the attack surface increased and people have been managing their attack surface on every possible yep. places and that's what the whole security would be even in future with new stuff coming in there would be more attack surfaces and if you're doing your basic strong you would be able to sail through that as well very simply right it's not going to happen that oh now this has come and this is going to change everything and it will become very difficult to maintain security here onward no that's not going to happen yeah people have been thinking and worrying about the quantum coming and post quantum yeah. cryptography and all yes it's a very big risk but at the same time the security teams are also working on that direction yes the way you cannot be secure on your desktop laptop server without patching and updating the complete security stack with new age it cannot keep you secure with your older stuff you have to keep updating yeah. so if a post quantum cryptography is coming in the post quantum breaking of crypto is coming in the post quantum safe crypto is also be coming in so you have to patch yourself you have to update into that 
and it will continue this will continue this will continue and our industry will continue we will always have the jobs in this industry if we are not worried about that we will going jobless anytime in the visible future it's a vast field like anyone can take up any uh, profile that you want to work with and you can be into sales you can be into marketing you can be into hardcore testers you can be into consulting so uh, the area of work are endless no only thing we need to just place ourselves at the right time at the right position at the right place. and wait yeah that's why so thank you thank you so much rohit for sharing your insights Thanks, i think we have learned so much from your experience personally me i have also learned so many things from you today and uh, thank you for coming to our show thanks thanks shivani happy to be here and 